Hey guys, we are the Food Foresters. I'm Amy. I'm Danto. And we are going to go ahead and show you all of our homestead, all of our animals, the plants, and how we actually homestead here in Central Florida. We are actually in zone 9A, 9B. We're right on the border. And so a lot of the stuff that we grow here, we know it would be difficult for anybody north of us to grow. But what we do is we make sure that uh, we've been experimenting with what can and cannot grow here. So that way we can actually figure out what we can do to live off the land as much as we can. Be as, as sustainable as possible. Yes. Um, we do have dual purpose animals and we also grow a lot of the tropical stuff because obviously, you know, here in Florida, we deal with a lot of different things that people up north don't deal with. Besides love bugs and hurricanes, we have to deal with the heat and humidity. So for us, we have to actually plan our day around the afternoon and we also have to deal with the thunderstorms that come along with that. So it's also kind of hard to keep up with, you know, the mowing, the weed eating, um, just, you know, general maintenance sometimes. It's also a pain in the butt to do around here. In the humid weather. Yeah, especially it's humid. Um, now, we are a one family income. Donald works full time as an electrician Monday through Friday. I stay home. I take care of the animals. I take care of... Um, uh, Donald's son. We are a blended family. I have two older daughters who are pretty much living on their own. And then Donald still has his son, Brayden, who is also autistic. So we also have challenges there. And Amy homeschools. Yep. Him. <laughs> so. so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and walk around our homestead. Um, one of the things that um, we also have an issue with is flooding when we bought this property we bought it as it was like a private sale it was it, a quick sale a quick private sale um, it is run down or it was run down we are remodeling this mobile home we are taking care of the land we've had to clear a lot of it a lot of it's overgrown we've come into problems where um, the prior people let other people put trash on the property so we're actually cleaning up other people's trash um, and then the flooding um, we found out that the way the land is graded is not that great and we actually end up with a lot of flood water around the house that's what happens when you buy property in a drought and don't realize yeah. how wet it actually can be <laughs> Um, so if you are interested in looking up land, one of the recommendations I would do is look at the 100 year plan um, or flood plan that they have online. You can actually go and zoom in all the way into your area. And if we, I think if we would have known that, I think we probably would have been somewhere else, but. We got this at a heck of a deal that, you know, we're still yeah. happy with what we end up with. Oh yeah, we are really happy. So we're gonna go ahead and go through the different zones that we've built up. We've been doing this since 2017. And so we've come a long way. And our main goal is to reuse, repurpose, recycle what we can. So that way we're not having to fork out money to buy stuff new. We buy everything on the cheap. Yes. We do everything on the cheap as possible. Yep. So a lot of the stuff you see around our property has been either given to us by gracious viewers, friends, and family. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start off in the greenhouse area. All right, guys. The first uh, area we're going to show you is our garden greenhouse area. We started this area off first as a garden and then put in the greenhouse. Um, we take all the plastic off of the greenhouse during the summer 
and we only put it on for a couple months out of the year in the winter. So let's show you what we have. All right, we're gonna start off over here. This is our low quat, right? Yep. Low quat tree. And this is our lemongrass. We have several low quats and lemongrass all over the area. This is uh, more lemongrass. Yep. This is our garlic in here, our tub. Um, we had radishes in here to start with, along with the garlic. Radishes did great. The garlic, um, we're having a little, in this heat of Florida, growing garlic is a bit of an issue. Um, we're trying to figure it out to see if we can grow garlic because we love to cook with garlic. Um, so this is an experiment. Hopefully we get something out of it. Hopefully we learn. I know some people have grown garlic here in Florida, so we're just, this is a learning process for us. And this is also something that we got. This was an old U.S. Post Office mail sorting bin that we uh, drilled some holes in the bottom and uh, put some soil in to grow things to kind of keep it up off the ground. Yeah, this was gifted to us yeah. also. Now this is one of my favorite trees that we have here. This is our papaya. And this is a very special papaya that we've grown. We've grown it from seed, from other papayas, that, you know, getting the best taste that we got, you know, because papayas are, they can be a bit earthy. A lot of people don't like them, but this one is very special. It actually has a caramel and coffee flavor to it. We give out a lot, we give away a lot of our fruits and vegetables. This one, we don't give away. <laughs> Every one of these papayas we are eating. And then we do try to grow mint around our trees. And you'll notice too that we have tires around a lot of things. Because of the flooding. Um, because of the flooding, we want to make sure that the roots don't get the root rot. So we went and started using tires as part of our growing and it's worked out great now a lot of people will um you know complain about you know tires leaking um what do you call it uh like metals and metals stuff and like stuff. this but with the research that we've done that's mainly in playground areas where they've chewed it up and it off gases and leaks leaks metal these are temporary until we can build the land up a little more control the flooding then we'll be cutting these tires off and uh, doing Disposing away with of them. Yeah. And then this is the greenhouse that Donald and I built. Uh, was it going on year two? Yeah. Yep, year two. Um, it has doors on either end. And then we got the hoops on top. And how long is this, honey? It's 22 feet long and eight foot wide. And we have three mangoes and a soursop and now the set the, the mangoes are uh, subtropical the soursop is strictly tropical that's why we have it in this greenhouse this greenhouse was built specifically for this soursop yeah and like i said we do get freezes here but it's the um the freezes will take this tree out um so we have it protected and we built this long enough because during the winter season, we actually take cuttings. Like this is a strawberry tree cutting. We took it from the main uh, tree there, potted it, and then over the winter, it stayed in the greenhouse and it established roots. So it is now something that we can go and plant elsewhere. You look over here, these are all cuttings. Yep, these were all inside the greenhouse as well. Of our cranberry hibiscus. This is another one of our favorite plants. It has, it's, uh, you eat the leaves, um, and it has a really nice citrus bite to it. We love it on tacos. We put it on um, sandwiches like lettuce, hamburgers. And salads. It's great. Mm hmm. Now, in Florida, 
we can't grow greens for most of the year. You know, yeah. a little bit in the winter and spring, except for this kale. We love this dinosaur kale. Yep. And uh, we're able to eat into that well into the summer off of this. Mm -hmm. So, and we also we have our from. strawberries in here. Yeah, now the strawberries aren't producing, but they're starting to, to produce their runners. So we're actually going to take these strawberries and expand it into this next row here. That one tiny little plant right there, that is our eggplant. Eggplant does great here. We love eggplant. We love the strawberries. Now this row that you see here where we do the chop and drop. Chop and drop is where you cut down any um, the plants and you let them rot. It mulches and mulches. It adds right in place. Yeah, it adds um, you know n nutrients back into the soil. So we've tried growing corn here. We tried it twice now. We cannot get corn to grow. So this next season or coming up next year in spring, we're going to decide what we're going to plant there. We're thinking probably uh, at least peanuts. Yeah. Because we... We just harvested jumbo peanuts. And that we're really excited about that. And that'll come... Uh, we had the peanuts in here. And that brings us to this raised bed. Um, we are big into, you know, reusing, repurpose. We didn't have the money to go buy wood and make a proper raised bed. But we had leftover garden wire stakes and there's a pole barn in the back of this property and we had extra siding that's actually or underskirting underskirting so we went ahead and made our own raised bed out of the stuff that we had on the farm and it's worked out great this bed has been used two years now and we've grown eggplants in it eggplants um tomatoes. tomatoes we've like i said we just harvested harvested jumbo peanuts and it worked out great um now you'll see a lot of these plants here i'm trying to get it oh, it's not in the sun mexican sunflower yep they are great nitrogen fixing plant you when they get so high or when um you need to cut them down you cut them down lay them on the ground and it will actually add nutrients back into the soil chop and drop chop and drop and here in florida because of the high humidity and the excessive rain things rot really quick around yeah, everything here breaks down quickly. now also in the greenhouse you'll see we got leftover plants we just haven't gotten to and when we say that we have troubles with weeds, weeds, you know, it, it's almost insane to keep up with things. So now this is called a strawberry tree. Um, this is definitely a unique plant or tree, I should say. Um, it will produce these flowers if i don't know if it, it is flowering but i don't know if there's, oh, I think one there's some on the other side on the other side but you get these little cherries you can yeah. see some right here there it is here's one's just starting to turn red yep but they look like a little cherry there's no pit there's little tiny seeds in it that actually taste more like grains of sugar yeah but it tastes like cotton candy and the reason why they call this the strawberry tree is because the flowers look like strawberry flowers is there one there? No, it's already. Yeah, dead. But it looks like it has a strawberry flower to it. Yeah. And we have some of our uh, dwarf bananas over here. That one over there is a teeny tiny banana. That one will produce bananas at about two, two and a half feet tall. And then this is lemongrass over here. Yeah. And we have how many different types of bananas? I think we're up to around 12 now. 12, 12 different types. Garden snake. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, and that's another thing we have here. Lots of garden snakes. <laughs> I catch them all the time. <laughs> all right, now over here first, we went ahead and we're trying to line the fence line with 
Uh, these are, are these all ice cream bananas? Yeah, those are all ice cream bananas across there. Ice cream bananas. And for those of you that don't know, ice cream bananas have a taste of sweet vanilla to them. And that's why they call them ice cream bananas because it literally tastes like vanilla ice cream. Now also down here as a cover crop, um, this is all, oh, what's that Hawaiian island name? Mo Molokaya purple sweet potato. Um, it grows great here. We, this whole area is just covered in this. It go, uh, goes all the way around on the other side of the thing there. We'll walk you around. Um, but literally that's all we eat now is the purple sweet potatoes. They yeah. taste great. And we also have wild Everglades tomatoes growing here. This is, it's a little tiny cherry tomato. Mm -hmm. right there. And uh, they're super sweet, unbelievably sweet. And they literally grow wild here in, in Central and South Florida. Yeah, I mean, you can see them all over the place yeah. here. You get one cutting or one of these plants growing, you will never be without tomatoes here. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? And one plant will turn into 20, 30. 5 million plants. <laughs> literally, we started off with one cutting three years ago. Yep. And the birds ate them, we ate them, we gave them away, we fed them to the chickens and the ducks. They fell onto the ground, the birds took them everywhere. Now I mow them down, weed eat them down because they come up everywhere. Yep. Now this was our old flock pen and um, we have since moved animals because um, what we try and do is we're moving, we're trying to use um, the process where, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? We rotate them so yeah. that they, they will fertilize different areas on our property. And this was, we had, we had them in here. Then we had them over there on the back side on where the garden we just came out of. Mm -hmm. We moved them back here and then they went down to our mm -hmm. other spot. And then this was our old compost pile or area. Now we still do use this, but we mainly use it for the weeds when we cut down stuff, um, because we do compost as much, you know, we try to do composting it when we can. This was our old quail house. We used to um, have quail. Um, the turnix quail. Yeah, we, we weren't quite happy with them because of how they, they were just a little bit tough, right? Well, no, not if you brined them, they were okay, but they were a little small. We're thinking about doing the Bob White quail, mm -hmm. but with the Bob White quail, they're they're larger, but they take longer to grow out than the Caternix quail mm -hmm. or the Japanese quail. Now, I, I enjoyed the Japanese quail. I liked them. It's just uh, we wanted to try something else this year. Um, I had a little medical issue, so I wasn't able to get to the where I could build a, a coop for them because the Japanese quail are real happy being in a small confined area the bob white quail they need room they need more room they need to be able to fly and stuff like that so i wasn't about to get animals that i wasn't quite ready to and if you look right here oh, yeah. i just That's spotted it this is one of our everglades tomatoes and now i do not like raw tomatoes but I will eat the heck out of these because these things are so sweet. Mm. They're just sweet, tomatoey, just really, really good. Mm -hmm. They're great in salads. And then we got some more. Um, Those are the dwarf cavendish. Dwarf cavendish there. All mm. of this is mainly, it's not only weeds, but all of this is really Everglades tomatoes that have climbed up the fence and they're falling over the other side here. <laughs> now this here is called red sorrel. Red sorrel is really um, a hibiscus type looking flower, but- It's a, it's a member of the hibiscus yeah, family. Yeah, member, um, but you could take the callus that's around the seed and drink, um, we dry it, dry it, and then we cook it up as tea. Whether it's hot tea or cold tea, 
you can also add a little uh was it rum well what you do is spice it up yeah. with a little bit of cinnamon um and different spice ginger uh lemon peel orange peel grating and you you cook that up heat it up and add rum to it great holiday drink um, Amy makes it for me. I drink it almost every day at work because it's packed full of vitamins and she adds a little stevia to it and it looks like red Kool-Aid and tastes like punch almost. Mm -hmm. It's just a really good flavorful drink yep. and it's good for you. So this season, um, I did a lot more red sorrel. This whole row is red sorrel and like I said, wheat. I got a hand weed in here this whole row is red sorrel and then the two little I don't these think. i don't think it's growing but i did plant cotton and i thought it'd be cool to grow a little bit of cotton just see if we could get it but no, it i think growing. we're going to try that at another time yep so this was our going back towards the greenhouse area this gorgeous tree right here donald is very proud of this is cassava um i got some of this last year and planted it and we did a, a video on harvesting the cassava um we dried it dried the cassava it's a root you can make flatbreads out of the flour what you do is you dry it and then you uh, put it in a blender and chop it up into like a powder um, you can also make uh, cassava fries. Cassava fries, which Amy absolutely <laughs> loves, is you slice the cassava up and boil it and then deep fry it. Oh, it's so good. And they are really good. But we love the cassava. I use it, the, the powder, the flour, to thicken gravies and, you know, stews and stuff like that. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. And um, you can't make uh, raised bread out of it, but it makes great flat breads. Mm hmm. And we have this planted all over. Yeah. <clears throat> this one just seems to be the uh, tallest one. But it's a gorgeous looking plant. All right. Now, this here is one of our, this is our baby brooder area. So when we hatch eggs, we bring them out here. And this is a secure brooder. It's got locks. It's got um, the um, heat lamp. Heat lamp. It's got a feeder and a water in it. And all we do is we just check on them every day. Every morning I'll prop this open. Once they're feathered out, they only get the heat lamp at night. And then as they grow out, we then take them to the, ben, uh, to the pens. And we made this out of pallet wood. And left over, this was a siding one? Yep, this was siding. Yeah, that was siding. Now, over here is another thing that we do as repurpose, reuse. This is Braden's old swing set. And what we did is we took the swings off. It's just the frame of the swing set. We put tires around the poles, filled them up with some good dirt. And we use this to grow our Asian yard long green beans, which we'll show you right here. These are amazing. Some of these get even longer. They can get 18 inches long or better. Wow. Now this year we also added in between um, some tomatoes. Some tomatoes, which this experiment is not working out as good as we thought it would. I mean, we are getting some tomatoes off of them. I mean, look at these. These are really good. Mm -hmm. We're kind of behind on harvesting. There's a lot of tomatoes here we can still get. We're just a little bit behind. But, I mean, it's, it's doing okay. Not as good as we thought. And what we did is uh, the bamboo is something that's growing on our property in the back. So we drive over to the other side of our property and we'll harvest the bamboo. We found some plastic lattice on the property and we got that tied to the um, swing set. And then that way the beans can grow on it. And there's a good shot of it. And I'll show you the other side here. This is the open side. Um, sorry if the sun gets in your way. We're trying to film this. The beans kind of overran the, the tomatoes. tomatoes. Yeah. 
which here, we weren't expecting. Because here in Florida, we have a problem in the summertime with the tomatoes. The sun really beats and, and the moisture and everything really does a, a number on them. So we were hoping we could shade them a little bit with the green beans. Well, they shaded a little too much. Yep, and then over here is one of our friendly garden spiders. This is a yellow garden spider. Orb weaver. No, it's not an orb weaver. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's pretty much takes care of the pest for us here. Uh, she's been there for the last couple of weeks, so we're kind of just we let her do her thing. Away. I'll, even though there's like beans behind her, I will let, just let her leave her alone. <laughs> <laughs> they're harmless though so now we're going to take you over to our this is our duck pond area and uh we'll show you what we mean by um the issue with the flooding this whole back side of the property well it's actually more like down the center yeah down the center of the property you can see all the flooding. Eventually, we're going to do some earthworks and build a retention pond and, you know, some wet weather ponds for in here. Um, we normally only have the ducks in here in the yard, um, but the grass and the weeds were starting to grow up a little, little too fast. The ducks weren't taking care of them. So we move the chickens over here and the chickens will clear this all out for us. Yeah. So um, that's our rooster, Stupid. And the reason why he was named Stupid was because when we first got him, he kept going into the, um, our dog, dog pen. Yeah, our dog pen. And then our dogs were, were chasing him. So it's like. And we'd get him out, toss him out, and he'd fly right back into him. Now we do have a lot of ducks and we also have one goose. That's baby boy over there, swimming in that little deep little area. He's kind of the daddy of the group. Yeah. Um, all of our new ducks, new turkeys, new chickens, he kind of raises. We put them in with him um, and a grow out pen. And uh, he raises them when they're small up until they're big enough to be left in the pen alone and then we'll bring him in here he's got two ducks now that he's raised that are following him around he's a pretty good d daddy goose yeah now all of these ducks in here are dual purpose um once the ducks have um cut when it comes time to call them um they will go into what we call freezer camp but in the meantime, they will lay the eggs for us and um, I get more duck eggs than I do chicken eggs. So. <laughs> we love our duck eggs. Yeah, we love our duck eggs. Now we will be raising more. Um, I'm hoping to hatch some as soon as it's not quite as hot, but I want to hatch some more duck eggs um, to raise that we'll just raise strictly to butcher. Yep. Once we get more of the turkeys out of our grow out pen. And as you can tell, we got more bananas here. Um, the reason why they're growing on this side is to provide shade because the summer sun, this is all north. This is straight north here. So during the summertime, anything that we can give these guys all, you know, give them some shade, we will. Which will now bring us to our, what we call zone three. This is our quote unquote orchard area zone three and this has a lot of plants that donald has particularly planted in here for certain reasons yeah first we've got some apple bananas that's another different type of banana we have we have sugar cane growing out here um i just got a, you know a, a chunk of sugar cane which i planted and this is the first year that we're planting any sugar cane um, we got avocados, more cassava. This is a little overgrown. I need the weedy. Yeah. Um, but we've got cover crop, sweet potatoes in here too. More cassava. We've got some of our citrus, which is being overrun. Um, cactus. We have another strawberry plant. Lots of cassava. You notice we're planting on... Uh, on getting a lot of cassava this year, hopefully. 
more different types of bananas. We got our olive tree. Um, we got mulberries. Um, this is the, I can't remember the type of one this one Looks is. like a mango. It is a mango. But it is a, a mango. Um, we try to keep tags. Pride. This is one that you'll, you'll you'll see a lot of, but uh, my boss actually gave it to me. He bought it. He planted a bunch of them on his property, and he gifted me that. Um, so watch the ant pile. Uh, we got uh, um, this is your uh, crepe myrtle, crepe myrtle, which is a flowering tree. We got some pawpaws. Yep, here's our pawpaw that we were gifted. One of them. We've got lychee in here. This is a uh, a uh, citrus. This is a flying dragon citrus that I'm growing up. It's supposed to be, um, it's going to be more of a bitter citrus, but it is, it's, the greening is not supposed to affect it as much. We, we have more papayas here. Now these papayas are, uh, um, not too sure. These are ones that we grown from seed, but this one, this one, and this one withstood the freeze without any of the leaves or anything falling off of it this year. So I'm excited about that one. If they have good fruit, we'll be cultivating them too and planting those seeds. Um, we have uh, pineapple in here. Yeah, uh, these are the sugarloaf pineapple. Don't pick it. Yeah, this one is actually it's kind of on the small side. It's not ready yet. But it's it's the one the one over in zone two is getting huge. Yeah. We got a couple of them that sprouted yeah. this year because pineapples take almost two years, like bananas. They take uh, two years to produce. Right. And you can see, you know, we can cut this off off of this plant. This will send off a shoot. We got a shoot coming off of here that we can replant. That's another. Yeah. That's another pineapple coming out. No, it's this is just a like a little sucker that comes off, and you can replant that and get a pineapple out of that in two years. Same thing with the head of this. We can plant that and get another pineapple. And then over here we were experimenting. That's a pineapple circle. Uh, you mean a banana circle? Or, I'm sorry, banana circle. <clears throat> this is our banana circle. What I did is I just dug a hole in the center, threw the dirt in a circle around it, and planted. And I've got several different types of bananas in here. I've got um, the double Mahoy. There's some dwarf Cavendish. There's, um, I believe I have some. I can't remember which one they are now. Um, a couple of red bananas planted in here. Um, we got more um, loquats over here. So we're really excited about this area. Now, just to show you, all this overgrown stuff is the rest of our property. It goes all the way back there. Um, we have not been able to get to it because of either flooding or the grass is so thick and dense we literally have to wait until there's a frost to try to mow any of this yeah. all this in the back that you see here that's all of our property too we have 2.2 acres we had a hurricane two years ago irma that flooded the area bad so we weren't able to get to it because we were keeping it mowed up until then yeah but then when it flooded it grew yeah up, and uh we weren't able to get to that area by the time we got to that area we couldn't mow it because it was so overgrown but we will get to it mm -hmm. um we got another pawpaw here this one's a little bit different yeah it's a different variety of pawpaw we have a few different types of small bananas over here um we got more ice cream bananas yep we got a lot of ice cream bananas. You can tell that's one of our favorites. Yes. The ice cream and the dwarf Cavendish because we make banana fries out of the dwarf Cavendish. They're not the greatest ripe bananas, but when you uh, pick them green, they make amazing 
banana fries. And there's one of our banana racks. All right, now we're going to show you um, our grow out pens. Hold on, I got to walk around because this is all flooded. This is uh, one of our drainage ditches. It actually goes from here, goes down, makes a curve, and then back there where that white thing is, that's the retention pond in the back of the property over by the pole barn. Now, a lot of the ugly side of homesteading, you're gonna have stacks of stuff. Now, we do have a pickup truck, and unfortunately, the pickup truck is down right now, so we can't make any dump runs. I gotta get a we, new radiator for it. Yeah, we do not get the luxury of the curbside pickup. Um, we do have a trash service, but it's bags only, and it's gotta be kitchen stuff, can't be anything heavy. So, the ugly side of stuff is, Stuff can get piled into one area and then you gotta wait until you can get it done. Um, this is also part of our property. Um, these oak trees are coming out. The electric company has been coming in our area and cutting down trees a lot. So, part of our system here, like I said, everything here is reused, recycled, or given to us. Or we buy it on cheap. Yeah, buy yeah. it on cheap. Um, this is one of our breeder pens. Now, as you can tell, we have here a, here, hold this up for me so I don't have to open up the cage. We have here is a bourbon red male turkey. And then his partner is a royal palm. So we're hoping not this year, but next year, we will have gorgeous looking babies, but these are also meat birds. We'll raise in this for meat and for hatching out. So we do have two different breeder pairs. In this pen, we have our new set of chickens. We don't put the new chickens <laughs> in right with the old ones right. because they just, they do not uh, mix Mingle well. well. Yeah, stupid gets a little crazy. So we got to wait for them to grow up a little bit more before we add those, add them to the flock. Yep. And um, so we have them here out with the bird netting because we do have to worry about hawks and turkey vultures. We'll get at them. And then over here is what we call our gray slates. Uh, this is our other breeding pair. These are both purebreds or heritage breed. Blue slate um, turkeys. Blue slate turkeys. Yeah, blue slate, I'm sorry. Uh, the male does not like me. Every time I go in there, I have to go in there with a stick. <laughs> and this is one of the animals that like me more more than it does Amy. All the animals love Amy and, you know, a little scared of me, but this one actually does not have a problem with me. <laughs> now, before we got the, uh, the uh, red, red, the bourbon red, this male was breeding with both the gray slate and the um, royal palm. And we're going to show you those babies over here because we hatched out a lot this year. Now this is our normal chicken yard. This would be the, where the chickens would stay. Um, but because we're dealing with a snake issue, we decided to move them for a while, for a few weeks. And then this is also their coop. If you want to open it, it's uh we haven't cleaned it yet, but uh, we have to keep an eye out for snakes. Um, I've been getting the uh, gardener snakes, but as you can tell, they have nesting boxes in here, roosting pen or roosting posts. Um, this is where they would come and uh, stay the night. Now, also too, around these gorgeous oak trees that we have, we've also are composting and growing different things too. We have um, dragon fruit and we also have a passion fruit to grow up the tree. This is our miracle fruit. This is a really cool, it has little red berries on it and when you eat them, they uh, change your taste buds. So you can eat a lemon and it tastes like lemonade. If you go, if you get one of those cheap apples at Walmart that has no flavor to it, 
you eat one of these apples after eating one of those berries and it'll be the best delicious sweetest apple you ever eaten in your life mm -hmm. now also over here we got we're trying to grow some coffee so we got a trial of three coffee plants what's that's ele that is toro toro that is an edible elephant ear um that's what they in like hawaii that's what they make the poi out of or they make a, a, like this pudding stuff out of. and then we got some composting buckets which were in the process of filling and turning and then here is our jacoba kappa this is a tree that produces fruit on its bark on the trunk they call it also called the brazilian tree grape yep and then we have another compost area here and then this is a mango um no i believe that is a lychee a lychee um it didn't like it out i had it planted out in the sun and it got burnt mm -hmm. and i moved it in over here in the shade hoping to uh hoping that it would come back yep so now we're going to take you into this is what we call the turkey grow out pen we have about what 25 turkeys i think we got close to 30 in here. almost 30 turkeys it's hard to count because they run around so much you can't get a good count yep. on them and they have a nice big area now one of the other spiders that uh, we do have here that we do enjoy having this is called a golden orb weaver and as you can tell i don't know if it'll show up but see her web is um, like a golden yellow color that's literally how they produce their silk and they're really a good spider to have with all the um different bugs that we have here so this is the herd <laughs> what we did is we raised we collected eggs every week and started incubating them so you'll see them different sizes all the way down to you see the little small ones and then this one here we were naming this one whitey um blondie or blondie or whitey blondie there he is yep there's blondie he literally came out practically all white so we were kind of surprised at that that but, was one of the ones from the from the uh royal palm that, yeah and you can see some of the other ones that have a lot of dark stripes on them like in the, the feathers the black feather or the black spots those are also uh half blue slate half royal palm royal palm and then all the gray ones which this has the little speckles of black those are going to be the pure um uh, blue slate blue slate i'm excited about the blue slates because i don't eat very many too much beef anymore where we're trying to be healthier so we don't eat ground beef and stuff like that so we're going most of these turkeys are going to go to to be ground beef a ground ground turkey ground beef substitute and with it being all dark meat we're hoping that it's going to be a better substitute for ground beef Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and take you back near the front of the house and show you the rest. Alright, this is a rack of ice cream bananas. Um, it's leaning up against the house, but it's a really nice rack. Um, so we're, we're excited to get those. We, uh, we freeze those, or we put them in smoothies, and you just yeah. add a little bit of milk to it and and uh, run it in a blender and it makes it like eating banana ice cream it's wonderful all right now this is on the west side of our house um, we added more bananas here to do a natural shading um, because we literally will be losing the trees that are coming behind us here these trees are be coming out um, because of the power uh, the power company wants them out but we decided to plant these here to provide natural shade during the summer. And then we have several different types of uh, the dragon Tur fruit growing. We have turmeric on here. We have turmeric. Um, here's another pineapple. Uh, Donald mm -hmm. loves 
hibiscus. So we do have several different hibiscus plants around here. Um, the porch is in a project, half project mode because part of it fell apart on us one weekend. We did not so build it. It was here. We did here. not build it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, another hibiscus. And then this is my favorite. This is called a firebush. Hummingbirds love this. And as you can see, I got flowers ready to bloom right there. Um, these are all more ice cream bananas. We, this is a little prince banana. We got another pineapple. And then we have a loofah somehow um a loofah seed obviously fell down in there and um we now have a loofah loofah vine growing so i'm trying to keep it down on the ground because i don't want it to intertwine with the uh plants the plants because loofah vines and when the loofahs are producing they are very heavy so literally it will break the branches unless it's in a good sturdy tree of some sort and we got some beetle leaf here. Yep, and that's doing great. This is our herb garden. Which um, we have to tend to this. This is part of one of our projects that we have to try to do this weekend. Um, but we got papayas. We got some bananas back here that are not the racks. Or A very sad rack. Sad, sad looking rack. <laughs> uh, but we'll make banana fries out of them. <laughs> Um, I have uh, hazelnut trees right here. I got to plant them. Um, different herbs. Um, this here is called a moringa. Uh, moringa is a super fruit, or I mean um, a super food, I'm sorry. And uh, for the first year, I've had this one here about, it's going on three years now, and I actually have seed pods in here. That's the first year it's done seed pods, so I'm very excited about that. And then we have our mulberry tree, which did great this year. Um, we also have shampoo ginger growing over in the corner. We have regular ginger and we have turmeric growing. And again, we're trying to provide natural light or natural shade, I should say. Um, that way, when it's fall and it's time to cut these down, we just cut them down and then during the winter time we get the sun so that way it'll heat up the house then. more uh, moringa more moringa bricks that we're going to be using for our new patio but i want to bring you over here to our passion vine this was originally the ramp going up to the house before it broke but look there you got one right there yeah this is passion fruit Donald loves this. I don't like them. <laughs> they taste sour to me. But Donald loves them. Um, the good thing about with passion fruit is that when it's ripe, it literally falls. So we just wait for it to fall onto the ground. And then we pick them up and eat them. Wash them off. I really need to trim back. I'll be making cuttings out from all these. Yeah, because with that ramp down, I can't keep a hold of the vines if you... Literally, look. Yeah, they're, they're going up the house. Going up the house. Um, these are what were these again? You uh, got Cavendish. Those? I thought you got um, some special ones in here. These are these are the the, the tall Cavendish, not the oh, dwarf Cavendish. Okay. Um, more moringa, and then we're back around to the greenhouse. But we're going to take you now that the sun is down under the trees. We can take you along the edges here. Now this is pigeon pea. Pigeon pea is another nitrogen fixing. So when you actually cut this tree down, it will actually, instead of it decomposing and sending the nutrient or the nitrogen on top, it actually will send the nitrogen through the roots of the tree. So it goes straight into the soil. These are Donald's Hawaiian sugar loaves. We have another loquat. This is our blueberry batch. Now these ones that look kind of rough, dead. Yeah, dead. they were given to us. <laughs> um, we tried planting them. This one looked like it's coming back. 
Those two in the and back. And this one here was given to us. It's coming back great. Those two, we're going to give it some more time, but I am not, summer. I don't have much faith in it. Now, you'll notice the um, grapevine here in the corner. That is... Um, Wild muscadine. Muscadine. That is a native to Florida. Um, we have gotten grapes off of it before. But they ain't the best. They're not the best, but they do taste like it. And we got several different... Um, grapes growing there's too. southern home pam um that's the southern home that's the southern home we also have um barbados, barbados cherry barbados cherry growing we haven't seen any per, uh it hasn't produced any fruit as i of got yet. one i got one from it yet last year <laughs> one this is our bay leaf tree so if we ever want fresh bay leaf we just come out here and pick it ourselves um we do have grapes growing you come around here see them right there we did not get to trim this one back this year like we should have mm -hmm. and it yeah, just we forgot isn't. It we is just ran us. out of time um we got more we have different bananas in the ditch here because they like they're heavy feeders they love water they uh our, we dump coffee grinds on them. The wood ash from the barbecue goes on these bananas. Uh, what is this one? I believe that is the black sapote, or supposed to be the black sapote. Yeah. More pineapples. This is my um, river birch. They love water. This is going to be a, a tree. We'll have to keep it down low because uh, the power company has told me if it gets too tall, they're going to have to cut it out. So we're going to keep this one maintenance. This is. That is a uh, mulberry. Mulberry. That is the. This that is, one was a white mulberry. Yeah. This is Donald's curry leaf. I love this one. This wor This is an. Uh, if you kind of like a good spice, get get this. It does great down here. We grow that. I mean, we use that like um, we would do uh, the bay leaf yeah. in soups, stews. Good and curry. Mm -hmm. All right, more bananas. Here we have the LSU fig tree. This is new to us this year, so we're gonna. Um, we were told this is a really nice, sweet type of fig. This is a a willow tree that's supposed to come out. I've already cut that thing back. I know it keeps coming back. Then this is our nice looking pineapple i'm excited about this pineapple because th i don't know the name of the cultivar i don't think it has ever been given a name a lady gave it to me that developed it herself it has it's a yellow pineapple with an edible core yeah nice. just like the sugar loaf but the sugar loaf is a white pineapple um this is the brown turkey fig which uh we lost ours last year and we've been looking to get another one back. I love the brown turkey figs. They are awesome. Sweet, sweet figs. Um, it's, um, which one's this one? That's the uh, Pakistani mulberry. Okay. Pa oh, that's a super long one. Yes. yes. We're excited about that one. <laughs> and we got some other bananas. I think this is the Mona, or the Mona Lisa. No. You said this was the Mona Lisa. Okay. That's, that's the, the little prince. Or no, the that's, over there. that's a, a different one. I can't okay. remember the name of that one. This is my jasmine. Um, we have this here for the pollinators. This is the Mona Lisa. And then this is Donald's dinner plate hibiscus. Too this, bad there's not one that's bloomed right now. Yeah, I mean, the closest one I can get is right here, honey. But the... Um, it's already closed up. Yeah. But it's about 10 inches round, so it's the size of a dinner plate. And then we have... The Everbearing. The Everbearing Mulberry. Supposed to be a dwarf. That doesn't look too much like a dwarf to me. No, but it'll work. <laughs> now, also to... Oh, um, we forgot to point out the plantains. Oh, yeah. That's new to us, too. Yes, we're excited about these. This, These two here are our first plantains. They are the rhino horn plantains. The uh, 
they're actually about 16 inches long. Yeah, so this tree, these will get taller, huge. Yeah, these will get just as tall as the ice cream bananas. Yeah. Um, but, you know, some of the pros and cons with this is, you know, we're doing this all mainly on the weekends. I maintain everything as best as I can, but, you know, right now the summer has come temperatures are over 100 degrees on most of the days and so just being outside period it's just hard to breathe i'm already sweating and it's like uh when we came out here it was like 97 degrees and it's seven o'clock at night um but you know one of the things that i can tell you the most is if you start getting bigger and bigger and more stuff growing the biggest thing that we put in was a watering system, a sprink, not a sprinkler system, irrigation. an irrigation system. That is a game changer because for us, all we have to do is come out here, turn a knob, and we have it sectioned off. All of this is zone one. What's behind me right here is zone two. Zone three is over there, and then we have the greenhouse. Um, and we just, because we are on a well. It saves us two hours a day. Yeah, it, it really helps out. And, you know, if you can find this stuff for cheap, used, it's worth it because then all you would have to do is just buy a couple of little supply things like what we did. Um, other than the piping, the PVC piping, everything else was, it came with it, you know, yeah. so we didn't have to worry so much. Um, Another big advice is go slowly. Don't jump in. Yes. And just go out and buy a ton of animals and go bit by bit you know learn what your land is and you know learn your your stuff don't just go out and buy meat rabbits meat chip meat birds egg birds ducks goats cows yeah take it you're gonna get overwhelmed plants. start with plants start with plants figure Maybe some... out what grows in your area look up your zoning um different zones have different things that can grow during different seasons you know like we said with our area we are unique because one it's florida it's hot hurricanes um we hardly get any freezes if we do get some it's rare but you know we have to worry about not only us getting heat exhaustion we have to worry about our animals getting heat exhaustion so that's why everything that we plan out where is the sun during the summer that's how we think where the sun is over here during the summer so that means it's casting say sun this way how do we provide shade during the heat of the day to our animals because they get overheated too so you have to not only think about yourselves you got to think about your plants you got to think about your animals um so take it slow chickens are the gateway to everything <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's like a gateway drug yes so if you end up with chickens let me tell you what you will then end up with a lot more stuff later on so we hope you guys enjoyed our tour enjoyed our information and if you want to learn more check us out on youtube you can send us some messages make some comments on the videos we'll be more than happy to try to help you guys out in any way that we can we have a facebook group you could always post in there we mm -hmm. we've got a lot of members in our group that will be more than happy to help you and give you advice yes <laughs> we are always trying to help people you know we're all about community community um and just because somebody does it one way it may not work in your area the same way so there's never a wrong way of doing something. It's just doing it the way that it works for you. Yeah, you got to figure, figure it out. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with experimenting. Yep. All right, guys. And remember, grow something, something for, for your, your family. family. Bye, y'all. <laughs>